What can spiders teach us, aside from abject fear? Hi, Spider-Men and women, Julian here for DNews. There's a widely circulated factoid that claims spider silk is five times stronger than steel, which is true in a way. There are a lot of different spider silks and a lot of different grades of steels. Some of the strongest silk can withstand over one gigapascal of tugging before it snaps. And by comparison, a steel wire the same thickness can have a tensile strength almost twice as high. But when you consider that spider silk is much lighter than steel, then yes, it can have about five times the tensile strength of steel by density. Not as pithy as the factoid, but more accurate. The area where spider silk really beats steel is toughness. Spider silk is extremely ductile, meaning it can really stretch out. That, combined with the amount of force needed to break it when it won't stretch anymore, means it can absorb three times as much energy as Kevlar before breaking, which explains why Cap couldn't get his hands free. Obviously, if we could replicate spider silk synthetically, it could have a lot of applications, but we're still untangling its secrets. See what I did there? There have been a few mechanisms that scientists believe contribute to the silk's ductility. In 2012, Dr. Marcus Bueller of MIT reported to the journal Nature that he had found four stages the silk underwent as it stretched. First, the thread is pulled tight. Then the proteins themselves start to unfold, the thread then stiffens, and finally, when it starts breaking, it does so a little bit at a time. When the hydrogen bonds holding the proteins together break, some of them immediately reform. It does this repeatedly, with fewer bonds coming back together each time, until they can't reform anymore and the thread snaps. The protein stretching and hydrogen bond fail-safes are hard to replicate in a cost-effective way. Multiple attempts have failed, including one that used genetically modified goats that made a protein in their milk that could be spun into spider silk. But scientists have recently made a discovery about spider silk that makes its stretchiness more replicable with the materials we already have. Scientists at the University of Oxford and the Université Pierre et Marie Curie noticed that the orb spider silk is always taut. Bend it, shape it, any way you want it, as long as you tug it, it's all right. Not only that, but when it's compressed, it still stays taut. On closer examination, they found thousands of watery glue droplets along the strand, each a tenth of a millimeter across. The glue is useful for trapping prey, yes, but on top of that, it helps give the thread its elasticity. When the filament shortened, these droplets would reel in the slack. When pulled on, they would spool it out again. The silk could be elongated and shortened as many times as the researchers liked, and it would still behave just the same. If you want more DNews, you're not alone. So with that in mind, we launched a brand new website, Seeker.com. There you can find all of DNews' over 2,400 episodes, plus original articles, photos, and more great videos about science, the world, politics, and even adventure and exploration. Click the link in the description to check it out, and if you like it, help us spread the word. It's brand new. Thanks. Spider webs are fascinating. Spider sex is terrifying. To learn why and get a song stuck in your head all day, check out Trace's video here. If he's DTF, he'll hop on her web and stop other guys from hitting on her by destroying it. This is like spider negging, which is gross. The web destruction makes the female seem less attractive to other males. Is learning how to mimic a spider web's ability to stretch worth the utter horror you experience every time you walk through one in the dark? Let us know in the comments, subscribe for more, and I will see you next time on DNews.